Now available on Blu-ray from Arrow Video is 1982's Fighting Back, directed by Louis Teague, who gave us Alligator, and starring Tom Skerritt as an Italian-American living in an Italian-American community in Philadelphia who has just had enough of the crime that is running rampant in his community. First, his, he, uh, I'm not going to tell you the whole story. He's driving. Uh, he, some, some friends of his are moving out of the neighborhood because it's getting too rough. There's, there's pushers and pimps and, and muggers and all kinds of inner city crime. And Scarrett's standing his ground. This is our community. we got to stay here. He runs a corner shop, deli, you know, Italian food and deli and, and all that. And he's driving his family away from a, a moving out party. And uh, his wife, portrayed by Patti LuPone, and not long after she did Evita on Broadway, I believe, uh, she sees a pimp uh, slapping his, his, his prostitute around and she goes out to intervene. A car chase ensues. Uh, she winds up getting, they wind up getting in an accident, Scarrett family. She loses the baby. I'm not going to tell you everything. I'm just setting it up. And that's traumatic. And she wants to get out of this filthy, awful neighborhood that's gone to, gone to pot. And he says, no, we stay. And then his mother, elderly, Thomas Garrett's elderly mother gets pretty brutally accosted in a pharmacy holdup. And pharmacist Pat Cooper, so the, side note, we're going to pause here for a second. Uh, Italian-American comedian Pat Cooper, who's very funny and had that classic album, uh, Spaghetti Sauce and Other Delights, where he's dressed up like the woman on the cover of Herb Alpert's Whipped Cream and Other Delights. Uh, Pat Cooper's in this film in a straight role. And he plays a neighbor, friend of the family, and a pharmacist who gets shot. Anyway, the neighborhood's gone to hell. Uh, best friend, close friend of Tom Skerritt is a cop portrayed by Michael Sarazen. He says, my hands are tied, there's nothing I can do. So Skerritt decides to form a community watch group. They are, what do they call it? Um, oh, there was a name for it. I don't remember. It was, it was like a public neighborhood committee or something like that. But they basically, they arm themselves with, they all wear vests and hats and like similar uniforms. And they, they're basically like the guardian angels wound up being in New York. And the film does reference real life crime. And at the time that was just out of control everywhere. And they reference the guardian angels and some other sort of vigilante groups or neighborhood watch groups. And Scarrett forms a group like this with all the people. And Sarazen kind of sort of, sort of per helps, helps out. But as a cop, he tries to keep his distance. And they just start trying to take the neighborhood back. They start fighting back. And uh, it's interesting, interesting film. So as the, again, I'm not going to tell you the whole story. So they form this neighborhood watch group and start just making their presence known, going into bars that are overrun with criminals and, and, and busting up the joint and going into places where the, the park that has been overrun by vice going in and basically pushing them all out and crime pushes back. So it's this, it's this war between the vigilantes and the city that doesn't condone this and doesn't want to look bad. And suddenly Scared is getting offers to run for office. And it's, it's, it's interesting. Certainly made in the wake, certainly inspired by the Death Wish films. Death Wish had come out in 74. This is almost a decade later, but Death Wish 2 was out around this time. And this is uh, Dino De Laurentiis produced this film. Certainly trying to cash in on the Death Wish thing, but not as edgy as Death Wish in terms of the violence or the, the grim nature. I mean, there's grim moments in this, but it's really more of a drama. And Scarrett's, you know... Good actor, great actor. So it's and as is Lupone. I mean, there's a good cast in this, and it's it's really more of a drama about people trying to stand up for their community and what can you do within the law. How far over the line are you willing to go to protect what's yours and your family and in your area, and uh, what are the consequences of that? It's somewhat of a real world take on this. It's a movie, but you know, like they. <laughs> They they take one of their cars and they weld like this huge, like, I'm not going to say a battering ram, but this very reinforced front bumper on the car that makes me think, oh, they're going to be driving this through places. They're just going to be mowing people down. It never goes that way. If there was if there was a straight out Italian, and this had a lot of Italian influence, uh, Piero Piccioni, uh, did, if I mispronounce that, of course, uh, did the score, very fun, kind of funky disco score to this. Uh, the cinematographer was, I have it right here, Daniele Nanunzi. That was, so it's a lot of Italian money and whatever in this, but it was made here, made in Philly and New York City and a little bit of New Jersey, I think. If this had been made by strictly by Italians as an Italian films with like Franco Nero or Mirzio Merli or something in it, this would have been totally bonkers and insane. But this is, you know, made 
predominantly, I think, for the American or international market and uh, in English, and it's uh, it's more restrained. It's more of a is is a surprisingly uh, low key affair. I thought it's got its moments. You know, it's got action. It's got fisticuffs. It's got people just beating the heck out of each other, slapping each other around. It takes it's got you know the the upright citizens brigade, not the comedy team, the upright citizens who have formed a brigade. Uh, just beating up muggers and stuff. And it was, a, I'm sure, a very cathartic thing to see at this time in the 80s because there was this feeling that crime was running out of control and in the, especially in the metropolitan areas and the police couldn't keep up with it and the politicians couldn't do anything about it. And that's where you got this wave of vigilante films, which, I mean, honestly, had started a decade earlier with, with Death Wish, but in the 80s, it really ramped up to be seeing a lot of these kind of things. And you had TV, you had the Equalizer, and you had the A-Team, and you had all kinds of, you know, people who weren't official law enforcement people just, just taking out scum. So fighting back is that, but it is more of a, a little bit more of a high-minded, a little bit more of a high-minded take on it. So what do we have for extras? Not a huge amount of extras on this. The transfer looks great. This is a Paramount release originally, so you get that classic Paramount Mountain logo at the beginning. Uh, looks and sounds fantastic. You get an interview with Louis Teague that runs a half hour. You get, and that in that he talks about um, his entire career up to the point of making this film for the most part. So he talks about working with Roger Corman and working on various films at uh, New World and some other things like that. And that was very interesting. And then you get an interview with the camera operator who talks about what it was like to shoot the film, what it was like to work with Teague and uh, De Leo Rentis, De Leo. Dino De Laurentiis, and that's 22 minutes. And then you get uh, a UK trailer, which really feels like a US trailer, but it was labeled as UK trailer. Looks like it comes from a tape source. Uh, that's a minute and a half. And at the end, the title is Death Vengeance. But the narration is the American, an American narrator whose name I don't know, but name I totally recognize from this era. So I think it was probably just the American trailer with a different title card at the end. And you get a US TV spot that's 30 seconds, which is a, just a cut down version of that thing we just saw. And that also taken from a tape source, which is great because it has the uh, superimposed chroma key titles over the still at the end, now playing at blah, 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 which I always love where they, they'll they rattle off. You can tell where it came from because it tells you the different cities and some of the voiceover maybe tells you a couple of the, um, they'll either say now playing at a theater near you or now playing at theaters and drive-ins near you or now playing at Sac Cinemas 5. So that's always cool that that's in there. That's actually to me, the quality isn't as good, but it's actually kind of cooler that it is an original, what you would have seen on TV at the time. And then you get an image gallery that is 15 images of publicity stills. I think it might be a couple of posters, the US poster, and I think it's a US window card, the more vertical poster. And otherwise it's just the still set that uh, Paramount put out at the time back in 82. So a uh, very interesting film. I had seen this, I might've seen this on TV back in the eighties when I was a kid. It's a movie I'd always heard about, but it hasn't, seemed to me to be wildly easy to see for a while, so thanks to Arrow, it is out. So for your vigilante, 80s vigilante film or Tom Skerritt or Patti Lapone collection, we have from Arrow Video on Blu-ray, 1982's Fighting Back.